Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, I'm the pixelated amalgamation of some guy. And let me tell you something right here and right now. Nothing quite puts a smile on my face like discovering a brand new AGS made adventure game on Steam. I try to play them all, which led me to play this game, A Bizarre Earthquake. A game made by one Turkish gentleman. Seriously, here are the credits. It's just one dude's name, who I really can't pronounce. It's, um, that. Any hoot. This is an intriguing little indie game made by one man. And yeah, I'm going to overanalyze it. Because let me tell you something right here and right now, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. This game has some meat on its bones. So with that said, let's turn up the funk. How about it for the Graham Central Station? <laughs> Quick, shake it down. I mean, let's talk about Bizarre Earthquake now, which means cue the gameplay footage. Now, when the game starts off, you're going to notice the production values. Yes, the menu screen is just a static screenshot of the game with some filter effects. And I kind of suspect the font was chosen because, well, it can be licensed for commercial use. Boy, it doesn't have to be more complicated than that. Practical things here, man. This is an indie game. Now, all of this may not sound very interesting, but you see... This game's running in widescreen, and in fact, it's running in my desktop's native resolution. Which doesn't sound that impressive, considering that just about every single computer game is capable of doing this. But, you have to bear in mind, this is an AGS game. Most AGS games, including the commercial ones, are only playable in lower resolutions. In fact, many of them only support 4x3 resolutions, which means, well, black bars on the side of your game. Now, this don't bother me at all. But to say the least, it is quite impressive to see that this developer has been able to make his game run in whatever your native desktop resolution is. Moreover, and in a page taken out of Midian Design's playbook, this AGS-made game is 3D. Well, not real 3D. AGS isn't Unity after all, it's 2D only. But nevertheless, the sprites, the backgrounds and all that, they were 3D models that were turned into, well, 2D images, and then put into AGS. That's kind of Midian Design's calling card there, and something I really have never seen outside of them. So again, this is a pretty interesting little development here with this little AGS. AGS made game, as is the fact that this game features two playable characters. That's right. We got some choice here. Shall we be? I think his name is Bora. Again, the names are in Turkish, so I'm just wildly guessing here. And to be perfectly honest with you, when I saw this dude's name, I thought it was Bor. So I'm probably just gonna call him that. We got Bor over here to the left, and then, well, on the right, we got Kansu. Kansoup? Yeah, I'm gonna call it Kansoup because, well, I'm a pixelated man. Don't expect too much out of me. But nevertheless, this is an intriguing little choice here at the very beginning of the game. Shall we play as a boy or a girl? I chose to play as a dude because, well, he was hanging out on the left, and frankly, I feel like I prefer my right a little too much, so I wanted to shake things up. Oh, looky here. Pre-rendered cinematics. Yep. Look, let's be honest here, because you got eyes. At least I hope you get eyes. The animation in this game is of the, how should I put this? Puppet on the string quality? Yeah, let's go with that. Everything's a little bit stiff and not quite as good as you would hope, if I'm going to be brutally honest with you. It is entirely passable though, I guess. It's certainly not ugly, it's just, well, kind of early 2000-ish looking. And again, it reminds me a lot of Midian Design. Good lord, maybe this dude used to work for them or something. But oh yeah, I probably should have brought this up sooner. There's absolutely no voice acting in this game, in either English or Turkish. So yeah, you're just going to hear one voice and one voice alone throughout this video, and it's going to be mine. Well, other than the random songs I put in. So, okay, I lied. Damn. Yeah, I'm a liar. Well, aren't we all? But nevertheless, what I won't lie to you about is the game's plot. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys here. The translation's a little bit rough. I don't know who did it, and I kind of suspect that the developer, the one man who made this game, also handled the translation because there's no translation credits in the credits. At least none that I noticed. Yeah, yeah I don't see them there, do you? Any hoot, it's a bit rough around the edges. And there's some bizarre word choices here and there that make me realize that whoever translated this game didn't speak English as a first language. But with all that said, I'm not going to force you guys to read this game in silence. And no, I'm not going to do voiceovers here either. I'm just going to summarize the plot and maybe point out here and there some particularly funny moments that, well, 
are worthy of your attention. So, with that said, allow me to summarize the game's intro right now. So the game starts off with our two playable characters talking to one another. Can Soup is gonna leave for the weekend, and Bora's really happy about it because that means he'll have the house to himself, which may lead you to believe that these two are lovers or something like that. But I assure you, they're not. This is some two's company shenanigan here. This relationship is purely platonic, but, well, kind of complicated because Can Soup employs Bora, yet they live together. So in a way, he's Alfred, and Can Soup's Batman, so let's roll with that. So based on Boar's expression alone right here, you can tell that he's one happy camper now that canned soup's gone, likely because for the first time in weeks he can finally watch his porn with the surround sound on. But unfortunately for our hero here, the flapping in will not occur because instead, an earthquake strikes. <laughs> Now I'm gonna have to give the game credit here. We're only a couple minutes into it and we already got our first earthquake. I mean, talk about living up to your title. So anywho, earthquake strikes, power goes out, but hey, the phone lines still work because I guess they're on emergency power or something. So, turns out, Can Soup's calling Bora and she's like, yo, there's an earthquake over here. And Bora's like, yeah, there's one here too. And she's like, oh, there must be two separate earthquakes. Let's investigate the one over where I'm at, in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. And he's like, okay, I don't want to do this. It's dark and we just had an earthquake. So likely they're not really going to allow people to come and go as they please because there may have been some damage. But she's like, oh, shut the hell up and take the Midnight Greyhound over here right now. And he just kind of concedes and goes along with it because, well, she is his boss. But that situation may not last for much longer. Considering on the late night Greyhound over to bumfuck nowhere, Bora's all like, I'm gonna quit. I've had enough of canned soup shenanigans. She calls me Big Head, which may be a big insult in Turkish. I'm not really familiar with her culture, but let's roll with it because it makes it seem all the more dramatic. But yeah, Bora's had enough. But his dramatic confrontation with his employer is going to have to wait. Actually, it never really comes around, but I'll get to that later. Because the moment he gets to where Can Soup was, there's a nice old lady who's like, Yo, Can Soup told me to tell you to go to bed. And he just, well, does it. Man likes to take orders, I guess. So our hero goes to bed, and that ends day zero. Now for day one. But first... So, do you remember when a couple of minutes ago I was like, there's two playable characters. I chose the dude on the left because I've been preferring my right too much lately. Well, if I had chosen to play as a lady, the intro would have gone slightly different. Now, I know what you may be thinking here. You're like, oh, guy, two playable protagonists with different plots. That's something you don't really see very often. Well, ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, we'll get to that because that's going to require some explaining. But nevertheless, the intro for Can Soup goes more or less the same. Well, actually, it's exactly the same, at least at the very beginning. She's like, yo, I'm leaving. And the guy's like, cool. And then she gives him the Vulcan sign and heads on out. And that's when things start to get a little bit different. So Gan Soup's in a car now, going to the middle of nowhere to do some research. Why is she doing this? Well, it's never really explained. She's just doing it because, well, don't you go off in the middle of the night to research earthquake stuff? Nevertheless, while driving over there, she begins to think about Bora and how much he sucks at his job and how much she hates him. Yeah, it's pretty obvious that the relationship between our two leads is quite strained. So much so, that Can Soup convinces herself to fire Bora the moment she sees him again. It seems like the tension between our two leads is coming in hot and heavy very early on in the game. And this tension appears to be mutual. Because remember, Bora's like, I hate that woman. She's a bully and mean to me. And I want to quit my job being her assistant because it just sucks so much working for her. So you'd think all this is going to lead to some major confrontation when the two parties finally meet. But spoiler alert, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, there is no confrontation. Believe it or not, all this early hoopla blob about quitting or firing someone is completely dropped. And it's not like the two leads patch things up or agree to some sort of ceasefire. It's just never mentioned again. So all this early tension that we're experiencing between our leads is completely pointless. Frankly, I can't think of a game that so quickly dropped one of its seemingly major subplots so early on. It's almost like the writer completely forgot that these characters said these things. Now, I could give the game the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, maybe they didn't mean the things that they said. But to me anyway, it just seems a bit weird that both characters would say the same thing, yet it's never brought up again. 
Just odd, that song. And speaking of odd things, Ken Soup's now at the shore of some beach, playing on her phone. And then guess what happens? Yeah, I didn't use the song there. But anywho, an earthquake strikes, and Can Soup loses her phone, and she tries to find it in the dark, and when I mean tries to find it, it's actually the first time that we have some player control over her, and we just kind of click around the dark looking for her phone, and sure enough, we can't find it. So then Can Soup goes back to the guest house to use the landline to call Bora, and yeah, that's where the plots intersect. So Can Soup's like, Bora, get your ass down here, and he's like, okay. So I guess she's not gonna fire him anyway. But nevertheless, she's like, hey old lady, I'm gonna go back to the beach to look for my phone, tell my assistant to go to bed and she's like cool and then we go back to the beach to repeat the same action that we did here last time that's right click around the dark trying to find a phone and guess what we still don't find it yeah talk about great introductory puzzles here just clicking around the dark not finding nothing and doing it twice so yeah the game starts off with some pixel hunting in the dark you have to click on everything in the screen until the game's like hey you click on everything on the screen there's nothing here move on with your life and since there's no show all hotspots button, you have to kind of pan and scan to find everything that's clickable. Yeah, not very fun. And what's also not very fun is that I think this game's kind of glitchy. Well, actually, I know it's kind of glitchy because I've recorded some glitches. So let me give you a little background here. About halfway through the game playing as Boar, I was like, hey, I'll switch over to Kansu and get her up to speed. So I selected new game, started as Kansu. And I began to notice while playing as Kansu that certain items and characters were in Kansu's game where I left them at Boar's game. Now this is all very confusing sounding, so let me clarify here. Look at this guest house. You see this lady in the lower left corner over here? The lady playing on the phone? She's not supposed to be there. This is a character that we meet later on in the game. But by sheer coincidence, this is also where I last saw her while playing as Boar. Yeah. This led to some weird glitches because it was like Boar's game was on stasis in the background, even though I selected a new game as Kansu. I mean, just look at this little interaction right here. These characters are really freaking out now because they are in their positions that they're supposed to be in Boar's world, but we're not playing as Kansu, so the game's deeply confused as to how to position them. It's weird and funny, honestly. But this also led to some really big problems because while playing as Kansu, certain key items and i'm talking about key items that you absolutely have to pick up to progress the game weren't there now maybe this was just unique to my experience but it became impossible for me to play as kansu to a certain point i just couldn't get the items necessary to progress the game but i did figure out a workaround i just loaded up one of my earliest saves as boar then swapped over to kansu this seems to have fixed the problem but i didn't think of it until well a little bit later on in the game Frankly, because I just found the glitches to be really funny and I was just rolling with it. But yeah, maybe this is a unique experience that only affected me, or maybe it's something bigger. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm a pixelated man. But what I am an expert on is what happens for the rest of Day Zero. As can Sue. She doesn't find her phone, and she goes to bed. The end. Well, the end of Day Zero, anyway. And it just so happens to also be the end of this video. I decided to take this game day by day. There's five days in total, so that means including this video, there's going to be a six-part series about this game. Now granted, they're all going to be short videos, but still, I feel like this unique experience is worthy of meticulous documentation. So, are you in for a five-part series after this video? Hopefully, because I'm making it. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, have a great day, and goodbye. Uh, Subscribe! Uh,